Let's start with something really, really general, um, sort of yeah. laying the foundation of where we're going to go here today, which is essentially, what is neurofeedback and how does it work? Uh, so neurofeedback is when we use EEG technology. So basically, we put sensors on the brain that record the brain waves. And different brain waves have been shown to be associated with different states of consciousness, uh, which are really tied to different patterns of attention, uh, different patterns of arousal in the nervous system. So are we energetic? Are we calm? And then the way these brain waves kind of show up around the brain gives us ideas of what's going on under the hood. So if you were, you know, a mechanic, you get a sense of how to listen when a car is idling just right. And so as a neurofeedback therapist, I start getting a sense of when there's a certain pattern of brain, like waves in a brain, that I have a sense that that person's overall nervous system is communicating well. So when I hear an engine or see brain waves that aren't quite aligned, and the person is reporting to me like, you know, I'm trying to focus, but I really struggle. So it's like a car, you're like, I really try to get up this hill, but my car just can't seem to do it. I go under the hood and the way you go under the hood with neurofeedback is when I see a brainwave that says, ah, that part's going too slow. That's why you can't quite get up that hill or focus your mind the way you want to. I will reward the brain every time it makes a little leap in shifting out of that low gear. So we want to go into a higher gear. So this slow brainwave that's not going to support focus, we would shift into a faster brainwave that would. And every time the brain makes that frequency, you get a reward. So in neurofeedback, we have a variety of ways of giving reward. It can be through a game. So you can have like boats are racing. You got the slow brainwave boat and fast brainwave boat whenever the fast one is going faster. You're getting feedback that, oh, I'm achieving that goal. This is the way I place my attention. This is the way I change the feeling of arousal up or down in my body to achieve that goal. So it enhances self-awareness. Uh, the other way we use is auditory feedback. So the music will get louder or quieter. Uh, sometimes we use lights flashing in the eyes, which can be really good when someone's got cognitive challenges or haptics where there's a vibration that lets the person know or all three at once. <laughs> hmm. So I think, um, <clears throat> how, how does this, so this, this is something that is happening that, that the neurofeedback is making happen by way of what it's inputting into the brain? Or is it something that it's just, it's just telling you when you've managed to shift your attention, your cognitive hmm. engagement, arousal engagement? Cause I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, okay, there's, I'm thinking about a number of things. Okay. Brain waves. I'm thinking about binaural beats kind of stuff, mm -hmm. something exogenous that changes, um, activation through entrainment. Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking about stuff like uh, transcranial direct yes, current stimulation, stimulation. right? Yeah. And then I'm thinking, or is it just, is it just reading and then giving you a feedback? So is there yeah. an active assist there or active assist in the sense that the technology is stimulating or is it an oh. active assist just in the sense that the technology is feeding back to you what you're doing or not doing? Yeah, it's just feeding back to you what you're doing or not doing. Uh, I do have the capacity to use stimulation. So I do use pulsed electromagnetic field. There is like TDCS and TMS, all of those things you can get. And some clinics will layer the feedback. So primarily neurofeedback is just a reward. The sensors on the head, I, I don't ever use the term electrode because it freaks clients out a lot of the right, time. Yeah. I said, it's, it's just sensing your brainwave activity. And then every time your brain does what we want it to do, it gets a reward. The interesting thing about that, though, is that our whole existence is built on using things efficiently and effectively. Like the body is seeking homeostasis. And often when we get out of the way, you know, sleep or different things, especially if you can go into deep states of sleep, the body will just heal. You know, you cut yourself, it heals. And it's, but it will be slowed down by inflammation or if too much energy is being used in a way that's not supporting homeostasis. So what's really cool about neurofeedback is that as the body gets 
and experience of more homeostasis, it actually seeks it. Hmm. So you're learning it consciously, but your subconscious, you know, natural innate healing capacity is also going, oh, our system is being used more effectively. And so the body gets starts leaning into that more easily as well. So it's, it's like a bottom up and a top down process, it appears to be. Hmm. You know, I might, I might have just checked out there, but I don't think I, I don't think I fully understand sort of like where the, where the, where the difference, where's the rest and where's the activation um, in all of that. So you, so, so what you're saying is neural feedback helps to reduce inflammation and helps to bring about rest in the brain, but then also it brings blood flow, like the way I'm learning over time, how to support a back injury is not less yeah. action. It's more, more mobility, more blood flow, more mm -hmm. whatever. So can you explain that to me a little, a little bit more like again? Cause I, I didn't, I didn't yeah. understand. Yeah. 100%. So it is, it's kind of this dance between activity and rest. You know, our nervous system, it has this spectrum of activity and relaxation, but we kind of get stuck instead of having this capacity to resiliency really to move between activation and rest, we can get stuck in activation or stuck in rest. Mm. So we get stuck in anxiety or stuck in depression, or we start to oscillate really quickly between overactivation crash, underactivation crash, overactivation. So neurofeedback is about bringing balance to whatever state you're stuck in and bringing that ability for the nervous system to be more responsive and less reactive. So if somebody's stuck in low arousal, then yeah, they may free up their resources and they may get more energy as a result. But if someone's also stuck at high arousal, we're gonna kind of unlock that system and help them achieve more rest, more restoration. So if you're stuck in low, restoration can come from active, and if you're stuck in active, restoration can come from being more calm. But in general, you want the flexibility to be able to respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this is something that this is something that the training of which actively changes the operation of your brain and your nervous system. They're one functioning unit. Um, yeah. It changes the sort of the the architecture of how your brain is able to be operated through your yeah. conscious engagement and how it generally operates autonomically is that is that correct yeah i would say that the way i describe it is it increases the capacity for communication complexity and relationship if you enjoyed this clip please check out the full interview linked here you could also check out more interviews like this one at our main channel adventures through the mind also linked here of course please subscribe to the channel here at Mind Clips and hit the little bell to make sure that you have notifications for every time a new clip is released. Thanks.